the story of the nun Rupananda, the Buddha's half-sister. The father of the Buddha, King Suddhodana, and his stepmother, Queen Mahapajapati Gotami, had a daughter, Nanda, later known as Janapada Kalyani, because her beauty sparkled day by day. When she was grown up as a young woman, her half-brother had already become the Buddha. One day she reflected thus, My brother was due to inherit the kingdom, but renounced all claims, and now has become the foremost being in the world, the Buddha. His son, Rahula, became a monk. My husband has become a monk, and so also has my mother become a nun. Seeing all my kinsfolk, those closest to me have adopted the holy life, I too shall become a nun. Accordingly, she ordained as a nun, but not because of her faith, but solely because of love of her king's folk and her wish to be near them. Because of her wondrous beauty, she became known as Rupananda, which means beautiful delight. One day she heard that the teacher had said, Beauty of form is impermanent, involved in suffering and non-self. So likewise are feeling, perception, the aggregate of mental states and consciousness, impermanent, involved in suffering and non-self. Thereupon she said to herself, In that case he would find fault even with my own form, so beautiful to look at and so fair to see. And because of her attachment to her beauty, she decided to avoid meeting the teacher face to face. Now the residents of Savati and the Order of Nuns, desiring to hear the Dharma, went to the monastery, and having heard the Dharma, they returned to the city, praising the virtues of the teacher as they entered. Listening to them, Rubananda was impressed by the extensive and wide-ranging praise from everyone who came back. In fact, it is said, those who praise the virtues of the Tathagata lack words with which to express all of their praises. So Rupananda listened to the nuns and the female disciples as they recited the praises of the Tathagata, and having listened, said to herself, In extravagant terms do they tell praises of my brother. Suppose I were to go with the nuns, and without letting myself be seen, look upon the Tathagata, hear him preach the Dharma, and then return. So she said to the nuns, Today I too will go and hear the Dharma. Said the nuns, It has taken a long time to arouse in Rupananda a desire to wait upon the teacher. Today, by reason of her, the teacher will preach the Dharma with many and various details. And with delighted heart, taking her with them, they set out. The teacher thought to himself, Today Rupananda will pay her respects to me. What manner of lesson will do her the most good? As he considered the matter further, he came to the following conclusion. This woman thinks a great deal of her beauty of form and is deeply attached to her own person. It will therefore be of advantage to her if I crush out the pride she feels in her beauty of form by means of beauty of form itself even as one draws out one thorn with another thorn. Accordingly, when it was time for her to enter the monastery, the teacher put forth his power and created a young woman about sixteen years of age. She possessed surpassing beauty and stood before the teacher with fan in hand, swinging the fan back and forth. As Rupananda entered the monastery with the nuns, she took her place behind the nuns and sat down and saluted the teacher respectfully. Having done so, she surveyed from head to foot the person of the teacher, richly brilliant with the major marks, resplendent with the minor marks, surrounded by a halo. Then she saw the phantom of a woman standing near the teacher and surveyed her face, glorious as the full moon. From the moment she looked upon this phantom, created by supernatural power, her eyes rolled back and forth. Oh, how beautiful is her hair! Oh, how beautiful is her forehead! She was fascinated by the glorious beauty of every part of her body 
and she became possessed with intense desire for equal beauty herself. The teacher, observing that she was fascinated by the beauty of the woman, proceeded to teach her the Dharma. The teacher began to transform the appearance of the young woman, advancing her age to early twenties. Rupananda began to see changes in her beauty, saying to herself, Now this has disappeared. Now that has disappeared. The transformation continued with Rupananda watching as the phantom woman progressed through more and more stages of life until eventually she reached decrepit old age with teeth broken, hair grey, body bent, crooked as a curved beam and trembling in every limb. Seeing this whole transformation from youth to old age, Rupananda was filled with a great dispassion, far removed from the yearning for beauty she had just a moment ago. Then the teacher caused disease to overcome this woman. She fell down and rolled over and died. Straight away her body began to bloat and pus and worms oozed from the body's nine openings. Crows and dogs then fell upon the corpse tearing it apart. Rupananda looked and thought, in this very place this woman has come to old age, has come to disease, has come to death. Even so, this body of mine will come to old age, disease and death. Thus she became to behold her own body in its impermanence, and as a result of doing so, she also saw her body as suffering and as devoid of self. Straight away, the three marks of existence appeared in her like houses set on fire, or like carrion tied to her neck, and her mind sprang forth to the meditation subject. The teacher, perceiving she had beheld her own body in its impermanence, saw that she still needed some further support. So he taught her the Dharma, saying, Behold, Nanda, this assemblage of elements called the body. It is diseased, impure, putrid, it oozes and leaks, yet it is desired by simpletons. As is this body, so also was that. As is that body, so also will this body be. Behold the elements in their emptiness. Go not back to the world. Cast away desire for existence, and you shall go to perfect peace. On hearing these words, Nanda attained the path and fruit of stream entry, the first stage of enlightenment. Thereupon the teacher, desiring that she should dwell with insight upon the remaining three paths and the three fruits of enlightenment, and desiring to teach her to meditate upon the void, said to her, Nanda, think not that there is essence in this body, for there is not the least essence in this body. This body is but a city of bones, made by building up three hundred bones. So saying, he pronounced the following stanza. This is a city made of bones, plastered with flesh and blood. In it are stored decay and death, as well as pride and jealousy. At the conclusion of the lesson, the nun Nanda attained arahantship, and the multitude listening gained comprehension of the Dharma.